So as we can see right here, um, I went ahead and drew the picture for question number one for Dr. Sullivan's exam to you. And question number one reads, a force P holds an object weighing 30 newtons, a distance 3 meters from the wall as shown in the figure. The tie rope T is tied 4 meters above the horizontal line of action. Calculate P. So we're looking for um, this, I would call it a pulling force P, um, and how much it's holding versus this tension force here which is holding um, this 30 newton block. So even this um, question, the way I solved it, um, I use my charts where I go ahead and I break everything up into my x and y directions utilizing whatever forces I need. And the one thing Dr. Sullivan really loves in these classes are um, three, four, five triangles. So we know three, four, five triangles have an angle here of about 37 degrees. It's about 36.8. Um, so your answer might be about a tenth off if you round up to 37. So what I go ahead and do here is I say, well, we have a weight force. And all of our weight is directed downwards in the negative y direction. So I'm just going to put a zero as a placeholder and put negative mg for our weight component. We also have a pulling force, tension force, and last of all, a net force. So the pulling force is only directed to the right in the x-axis. So we'll put a p here and a zero as a placeholder for our y-axis. Now. Our tension force is acting in two directions. It's acting both in the x direction and the y direction. It's very important here that we see the tension force is holding the block upwards and to the left. So for the sign convention of the tension holding this block up and to the left, it's very important that we pay attention. Because the block is um, being held by the tension force and the tension is pulling to the left, our x direction is going to be negative. Because it's pulling the block up, the sign convention in the y direction is going to be positive. So, to relate the tension in the x direction, I'm going to say tension, negative t, times the cosine of 37 degrees. Remember, cosine is just adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's the 4 over the t and the y is going to be t times sine of 37. And remember this is positive. Remember that I also like to always show the net force, but net force equals mass times acceleration, but here the block is not moving, so acceleration is zero, so our net force is equal to zero. So the way to solve this is just think of it again like a big math problem. T sine 37 minus mg equals zero. So we can go ahead and set T sine 37 degrees equal to mg. And here we can say the pulling force minus the tension force in the x direction is equal to zero. Or if we rearrange and add the T to the other side, we have the pulling force equals T times the cosine of 37 degrees. Now we see that we can solve this as a system of equations, right? With both having a t in common with each other. And since we're looking for the pulling force, let's go ahead and divide the top equation by 37 to solve for t. So t is going to be mg divided by sine of 37 degrees. Now we can take this quantity and plug it right back into our T here, so we have all of our parameters to solve for the pulling force. So let's go ahead and do that. Pulling force is equal to mg over sine of 37 degrees times cosine of 37 degrees. We know that our mass times gravity is a force, which is the weight of our object which is 30 newtons. So, if we go even further, we say P equals 30 newtons times 
cosine 37 degrees over sine of 37 degrees. And once we do this in our calculator, we get that the pulling force is equal to 22.5 newtons. You may get 22.6 newtons um, if you set it to 37 degrees, should be about 36.8 degrees, that would make it exactly 22.5. So the answer choice for question number one is choice number one on the practice exam, 22.5 newtons.